Hi, welcome to Shaman Sister Sessions, episode 29, The Solar Returns. And I am Catherine Bird. I'm here with my shaman sister, Michelle Hawk. And together we bring you this podcast where we dive into elements of spirituality, healing, uh, working as spiritual guides, mentors, and healers. Uh, our work in the world and what we see coming up in the collective and with our clients and with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. A little bit of a echo. So <laughs> hopefully that'll settle out in a second. Yeah. Well, so we're speaking today about solar cycles of power. And in doing so, we're doing partially, you know, because cycles of power are important in both of our work and really in the work of anyone choosing to work with metaphysical energies, choosing to do energy work. Um, but also we're celebrating my 30th birthday. Yay! So I, I turn 30 tomorrow on June 8th. And in light of this solar return, it has me doing even more introspection than usual. And for those of you who have been tuning in, I should hope it's fairly obvious by now, I spend a lot of time uh, thinking about my processes, my choices, and really doing the deep dive of introspective work as any good healer needs to do. So that's what's been coming up for me with my relationship to solar cycles continually under review, but especially lately. But Kat, I'm curious, how are you doing? What's good in your world in solar cycle land today? <laughs> You know, it's funny because uh, in Solar Cycle Land, I was on my Facebook, you know how they have the yearly little reminders, which is always interesting to kind of have that reminder. And today was a day that I received a uh, astrological reading where my astrologer was saying, are you sure that you, like, are you still alive? Are you okay? Like this is so crazy intense for you like I'm surprised you're even standing like there's so much change there's so much craziness going on and I remember having that session and and being in the experience of like ah yes all this crazy stuff's going on and for some reason I feel totally okay um because as was explained you know from my chart that really my my essence is on um transformation individual transformation like I'm like it's so written into my chart that like like transforming myself and my identity is one of the primary objectives of my life so <laughs> when I was looking at that I was like whoa it feels like the same this year like I've, I've hit another point at the same at this same juncture of the year where it feels like there's so much happening. Like I am having a lot of stuff come up for me, discoveries about myself and um, ways of being and relationship. And I've been having some really intense stuff uh, kind of come to the surface around, uh, you know, ways that I've been taught to be in relationship and stuff that I've been dealing with with my mom and like lots of stuff going on. And, um, you know, my experience of being like, wow, this is, there's some, there's some stuff that is very painful and that I don't want to look at. And yet the experience of being a full yes to, <laughs> that, to yeah. that yes. And so that, that's kind of where I am at in this moment. So we're sort of, I've been dragging my own self through the, through the, the street through the pebbles and the dirt and um, now I'm kind of like looking at myself and looking at all the things that um, that maybe I you know maybe need to change or or just need to have a greater awareness of on a regular basis and I think that as we're talking about this this subject you know of returns of both the solar return, but then also other cycles of power. And we've talked about cycles of power before in, um, in this show. And so I'd like for us, you know, you're really good at explaining this, but getting into really what we mean about that. Yeah. And 
uh, before we go there quite yet and touch upon specifically cycles of power, it's interesting. I want to draw our viewers' attention to a couple of things that you said, Kat, where you're noticing similar themes coming up around similar times of the year, right? Mm -hmm. And I've definitely noticed this for myself, too, where it feels as though, um, you know, I'm in a similar sort of place or similar sort of interpersonal and work-related themes going on every winter solstice, right? And then every year around the spring, different things happen and different, you know, relationships come up or, you know, it just seems as though the, the patterns renew themselves. And so this is very indicative of the solar cycle of power that we will be talking about of how to recognize the way in which our energy is moving in spirals and how to align our energies with the cycles of power that are already in place in order to bring more effectiveness and power to our intentions and our work. I wanted to offer our viewers really quickly also one thing that I sent out to my, uh, my community, my newsletter list of spiritual warriors, which if you would like to join that community, you can do so from my website, joyofenergy.com. And there's a place right on the homepage where it says calling all warriors of the light. And you can put in your information if you'd like to receive articles, etc. But one thing that I sent out in my latest newsletter was my own year in review where I looked at in my solar cycle, my last solar cycle, just how much change took place. That's one of the things I think that we don't really realize when we're so zoomed in on what's going on today, what's going on this past week, what's going on uh, this coming week, right? We're looking at these short frames of time and it feels as though change is occurring very slowly. And yet, I can pretty much guarantee you, any, anyone who's listening in or watching today, change is happening much more quickly than we realize. I highly, highly encourage you to do this exercise. I did it myself, and I've had a couple clients do it, and it's very valuable, where take a moment, make yourself comfortable with a journal and a cup of tea, and make a list of all the standout events and revelations, any big defining moments of the past year and take that in really kind of sit with each one and then give them all once you've read through them all give them all an emotional rating rate each one from one to ten on the scale of emotional reality whatever the emotional charge is so you go through your list of all your defining moments and everything that's an eight or higher really sit with and take in what exactly am I feeling in my body when I consider this defining moment? What exactly am I noticing in my breath? What emotions are coming up around it? What stories do I have wrapped up in this defining moment of my last year? And that will give you plenty of opportunity to dive into some deep introspection, investigation of the blueprints that we have from the past year that are affecting our current lived experience. So uh, that's an exercise that I would like to leave you all with. I love that, Michelle. So I just want to kind of uh, repeat back what you said, because it was at the very beginning, there was a little bit of gargle. Um, but just to be making that list of the last year of the main defining events and, and things that are standing out and then doing an emotional, um, you know, one to 10 on the emotional scale. And so those would be good, bad, sort of just whatever gave you an emotional charge. Yeah, regardless of what the emotions are, you know, so it does, I. Uh, for example, one of my personal note to defining moments of the past year was that I lost my place to live and, um, and then subsequently had a really beautiful soft place to land over the winter and now I live in an amazing house. So that whole circumstance, I think, would merit an emotional charge for me of about five or six and you know but if i looked at it six months ago it probably would have been much higher right because it was you know in the trauma of it and yet now there's so much richness there where okay it's not only the trauma of losing my home and then the questioning and the anxiety around not having a place to live but now it's accompanied with the joy of living in a very beautiful living situation right so there are the multi-layered facets there and this is something that i'm still 
journeying with, right? This is an evolving situation, but it's something that holds some emotional charge for me for a variety of reasons. So I'm picking apart the different pieces of why that is. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think this is really important. We often, as you said, we sort of, we live our lives and we don't, we don't look at how much we have done and how much we have accomplished. And in our society, we're always, we're like more and bigger and greater and uh, it's never enough. There's never enough and I haven't done enough and I'm not enough. We often don't look at what we have accomplished and what we have done and the big changes that we've made and created in our lives. I like to do this twice a year. My birthday is in mid-July, so I always do a deep introspection around that time. I usually try to go off into nature and go camping for several days by myself. And I do a lot of writing and going over what it is that I've accomplished or things that have you know, held me back, things that I've discovered about myself, and then my renewal, right? Renewing the commitments. And so I, I also do that around the solstice time in the, in the winter. So I kind of, I kind of get it on the two opposite, uh, two opposite sides of the year. And when we're looking at these, um, you know, ways that these cycles of power are affecting us, and we do regular journaling work. I'm not always the best at regular journaling work. Sometimes I'm really into it and sometimes I'm not, but I always try to do journaling work at least um, at certain points to give myself a perspective of what's happening and maybe even going back in time and kind of looking a few years back at things that were going on in particular uh, times. And we can even see how, um, you certain months of the year, you know, there, there's a very uh, real uh, studies around uh, anniversary syndromes that mm -hmm. occur for people. So when maybe a traumatic event or a certain thing that happens, a death in your family happens in a certain period of time, a lot of times we'll start to have those same feelings and emotions come up, but not have them connected to anything in the present and then we're searching for why we feel a certain way. And if we can start to become conscious of these cycles of power and these solar cycles of power where things are coming back into our field for us to feel again or to look at again um, or to experience in some kind of way. And, you know, I would even say that maybe on a, you know, a generational level, that we also might be experiencing or feeling into things that maybe happen to our parents or in our lineage. Um, so it can, you know, things that can be stuck around for a while. And, and, and sometimes we can sort ourselves out by looking at these cycles. Absolutely. Now's a good time, I think, to dive into really specifically what do we, what do we mean when we're talking about cycles of power? A cycle of power is... Uh, first of all, we all have cycles of power. Every individual and every archetype has its own cycle of power. So today, specifically, we're speaking about solar cycles of power. And even in there, it's in relationship to our lived experience here on Earth. So we have the daily cycle of power of the solar cycle of one day right? And we have the yearly cycle of power of the solar cycle um, in its full when we're doing an orbit around the sun, right? We have the full solar cycle of one year. Uh, in Within that though, of course, you know, we have the different seasonal cycles of power, which are, of course are different in the Northern and Southern hemispheres. Um, and other examples of cycles of power, we'll actually be speaking about the lunar cycle of power next week. And that is a very well-known uh, cycle in, as she wanes and waxes as well. I work a lot also with cycles of power in the animal realm. So types and, uh, okay, what is the cycle of power of this given animal archetype? And if you work very closely with that animal, how does its cycle of power affect your own? And how can you align your own rhythms with the cycles of power that exist around you in order to capitalize upon the energies that are taking place at the time? So that's what we're speaking specifically about today is solar cycles of power. And really it's, you know, the questions that we ask ourselves when working with cycles of power are, how can I 
work smarter, not harder, right? And how can I work with the currents of energy that are so much bigger than me, work in conjunction with them as opposed to maybe, um, maybe fighting against times that aren't really appropriate for me to be doing that sort of work or setting myself up to have a really difficult time when if I just waited a month or two, then things would go much easier. And so really that's the benefit of working with cycles of power. And this is, you know, again, solar, lunar, animal, whatever, you know, plant medicine you're working with, what is the cycle of power of that archetype and how can it support you? Right. Super important. I love, I love how you explained that Michelle It's really thorough. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, everything has cycles of power, as you said, um, based on, there's so many things that are coming into this equation of, of cycles of power. And, um, you know, at, in the realm of shamanism, as we are reconnecting to earth, to, um, you know, what's going on on this plane, this is a huge part of, of reestablishing ourselves within the universal systems, within within the flow of energy that's happening on the earth, um, and that we kind of try to do certain things at certain times. It makes sense to rest in, uh, you know, in the winter, and it makes sense to be more active in the summer. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we get down on ourselves when we can't or we feel we don't feel like doing everything all the time the same we want to always be at the same energy level at the same functioning at the same everything and that's not really how we work because we're animals because we're highly affected by the environment and on where the the planets and the sun and stars are in relationship to us Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's speak about some of those parts of a cycle of power that affect us pretty directly. In regards to, you gave a perfect example of... Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Sorry. Sure. Do you want me to keep talking? All right. Well, to our viewers who are listening in, uh, Kat had to duck out for just one second, so please hang with us. And in the meantime, uh, go ahead and start thinking, if you like, about some of these past events in, uh, you know, as I suggested in that life review, that year in review. Um, One thing, it is really important to look back at how far we've come. So I encourage you always to take a glance back and yourself a big pat on the back because you've done way more than you actually think. Okay. Sorry, that was a little garbly. And um, but, okay, there we go. You know, I was getting that it's, you know, we have done way more than we think. And, um, you know, one of the things, and I might have to run. Oh, yeah. I'm... Are you there? Yeah, I was just giving out your... Yeah, are you there? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Cool. Back to cycles of power? Back to cycles of power. And I might have Ooh. to run out. I might have to run out and do something really quick. Oh, okay. Well, if you do, then I'll just keep talking. Okay. okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, so. Kat, you gave a really fantastic example of winter and the rest time. Um, You know, expansion and contraction are really important when considering cycles of power, when considering what are um, functionally what's going on. Is there a lot of energy moving through? Is it a time of expansion? Or is there less energy? Is it a time of contraction? Is it a time of going inwards? Is it a time to, um, to kind of fold in on oneself? So exactly. that's one, th- huh? That's, that's really important. And especially when we're doing healing work and holding space for other people to be doing their healing work is to be cognizant of where they're at and where we're at as we're working on ourselves that 
um, there will be times when we're expanding and we're like, wow, my gifts are so just spot on at this moment. And I am like really inspired and I'm putting out so much stuff and I'm out and, and I'm creating. And then there are going to be times when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I need to go inside my little hole and I need to just look at myself and cry and deal with, you know, the next layer of stuff that's emerging within me that eventually will come to the surface and be this amazing gift. But for right now, this is where I am. And I know, you know, I'll just, I'll speak for myself, but also, you know, I work with and mentor a lot of healers and shamans and, and people who are on this path. And, you know, we get to a certain place and a certain level and it's like, we are the experts and we're the, um, you know, we're the, we're, we're always supposed to be in this certain field and we're always supposed to be having all the answers. And, um, you know, I've, heard a lot from my clients I know I've had the experience myself that if we do enter into that like dark night and I need to go back inward and I need to retreat and I need to stop posting on Facebook and I need to stop you know maybe I need to stop seeing clients for a week you know like we judge ourselves so harshly instead of just maybe going you know this is where I am in my cycle of power and it's going, I'm going to reemerge again. And it doesn't mean that I'm broken. It doesn't mean that I'm a fraud. It doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. It just means that I'm in this place at this moment. And I am, I'm going to allow myself to have the experience that I'm having. Yeah. That's super important and very valuable. Contraction is a part of the cycle of power. And it's not always the most fun or glamorous part of the cycle of power, but it is equally vital, if not more so in, well, I mean, more so, what's to say, what, what does that even mean? But it's equally vital for integrating all of the expansive energies that came through. Um, so speaking of these interruptions and cycles of power, the electricity shut off yes. in my space. <laughs> so I need to go reset the fuse box real quick. We're my... taking a five, we're taking a two minute break uh, here. We're going to pause the recording. Cool. We're going to take a, a two minute break because I have to go outside because the propane man is here. And okay. So you go, <laughs> right. So speaking of power, you go deal with the propane guy and I'll go reset the fuse box on my space and we'll- okay, please bear with minutes. us. Go make a cup of tea. We'll be right back. Yeah, thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we are back. Okay. Hi. We made it. <laughs> Yay. All the things. Right. <laughs> and power is back. Power. power is back. Okay. Cycles of power. <laughs> right. Okay. So, solar cycles of power. Kat, I also want to bring up one thing that I remember you told me a couple of years ago in terms of not only uh, record, and we'll give our viewers some how to's as well. Like what are some ways in which we can align our energies with the solar cycle of power in order to be most effective, but also in addition to what is the sun doing, right? You know, where it's, um, as we're going into the summer as, you know, especially right now as we're nearing the solstice in the Northern hemisphere, this is a time when energy is moving really fast. Things are speeding up. It's a little bit of a go, go, go. And everybody gets this feeling during the summer. So really my best advice to you in this time of great expansion and as you know, a lot of things are moving around is be really clear about where you're focusing your energy. Because this is one of the things with cycles of power is the sun, and, you know, for aligning our energies with the sun, it's not going to tell you where to put your energy. It's just going to amplify it. So if you're spreading your energy all over the place, or if you have a lot of different things that are pulling your attention, that's going to be amplified. But if you narrow it in and you say, okay, I have these couple of really important things that I'm putting my energy into, that's going to be amplified too. So it's really just choose what do you want amplified? Do you want your dispersed energy or do you want your focused energy amplified and expanded upon? Hmm, I love that, Michelle. I, yeah. I need more focused energy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Most of us do. I can do all these things at one time. Yes, yeah, no problem. <laughs> 
You know, I, um, as we're talking about cycles of power, one of the things that I, I love, and I don't know if this is the right place. Right. Well, that's all the things. All the things. Um, so is, you know, in my alchemical studies and working with, um, you know, working with plants, I did uh, a lot of study in practical alchemy. So working with spagyrics, which um, are alchemically formulated, uh, basically like tinctures on steroids. Um, so in the study, it's very, very important that you're working with specific plants or minerals on specific <laughs> days, on, at specific hours, that every hour of the day is ruled by different planets, and that um, when we are looking at ourselves and the planets that we are ruled, that we are ruled by, um, that we are affected by, you know, our intention, our focus on creating these correspondences in our work. And so taking that, I have also found um, calling in the correspondences in our shamanic work and our healing work, um, whether it's for yourself or for other people, of working, you know, on specific days, calling in different, you know, energies that are more in alignment with that day or even that hour that you're working. Um, you know, for me, it's like, uh, you know, working with those specific frequencies in a more intentional way to bring more power to the work um, and acknowledging that on certain days and certain times, this is this is actually more in alignment to be doing this kind of work than this. It's it's um, you know there's there's lots of information on the way that we plant and the way that we we you know sow the way that we bring um, you know we harvest and doing things at specific times is often really important and that goes for us too in our healing work for ourselves. And then the different things that we're doing as far as maybe when I work on my administrative work or when I'm going to be doing healing work. Mm. That's a really good point. And actually, honestly, in hearing you say that, I'm wondering if we should just always do our podcast on Wednesdays because that's ruled by Mercury. Right. Right? <laughs> Who is the, the planet, the messenger, the communicator, right? Exactly. So. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should be working on a on a Wednesday and on a you know on an hour that's that's more mercurial too. Right. Maybe let's look into that as well. Let's you know, look we, into that. So I think we arbitrarily pick Tuesday, but anyway, that's one <laughs> one way that we can. Available. Right. Exactly. Um, Kat, one thing that I'm so glad you started speaking about the alchemical practices and the uh, correspondences, that's actually the direction that I was going, but then I got distracted by speaking about the expansion aspects, right? My energy was amplified and expanded into distraction. Um, remember when we went to breakfast a couple of years ago and you were telling us about us, our women's group, you were telling us about the if you take a year and you divide it into seven and it's association with the planets, can you speak to that a little bit? Um, so I haven't really looked at this material in, in, pro, in a while, but yes, if, if we take a year and we divide it into seven, um, then we will have uh, the different weeks that are the, the periods of time that are being um, held by that planet and depending on that planet and it starts with the sun so if your birthday is my birthday is in july so that sort of starts the sun um weeks uh and so it's each you know weeks you know period that are happening in throughout the year you know it depends like if it's more of a positive or a negative or a neutral Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we can start to kind of track what's happening in your life, like doing journaling and finding out like what's happening in your life and then where it falls on that spectrum. And I found that there's some interesting pieces. Um, you know, for me, I'm born in the middle of July in August, like late July, August, I am, 
I am expanding. I am like learning so much about myself. I am having huge realizations, huge initiations always happen for me in August. And so, you know, looking at that and being like, oh, it's the sun. And then, you know, I look at myself, I was born on a Sunday. So I'm very, I'm held within the sun. Like the sun is very important for me. And when that cycle of power is, is great. And I know that from about mid July into August that I'm in this certain cycle of power, I know these are times for me to go on vision quests. These are times for me to go to uh, transformational events. These are times for me to stretch my container and offer something new. These are times for me to go into really deep shamanic work for myself because it's going to be supported by that cycle of power. Yeah. I might not be as supported doing that maybe, you know, in the, the, the later fall when I'm sort of in my Aries, you know, after the sun, the moon, the Aries, more Mars, Mars, I might not be in that cycle of power where it's going to be the greatest effect if I, um, it, it, it'll just be different. It'll be very different. Right. So let's, um, I want to break it down a little bit and give our viewers the tools on how to do that, how to calculate that for themselves. Yeah. So I have my notes, but I don't know. What they are oh, well, I remember what you told me. So it's okay. Cause I have the, um, the mind. I know. You have, you have so, right. So there, if you take a year and you divide it into seven, there are 52 days in yeah. each section. So like we would have 52 weeks in the year. We have 52 days in each section. So you start with your birthday and you count 52 days after your birthday is the cycle of the sun. So for those 52 days, you are governed in this alchemical tradition, you are governed by the sun, which again means that time of expansion, that time of light. The So, you know, this is important. I want to also just insert a quick note about the solar cycles of power in itself, like what is the sun doing? It's doing its own thing, but also what is your own personal cycle of power in relation to the solar cycle? They're both totally valid. They might be in opposition, quite honestly, or they might be more in alignment. So like yours is fairly in alignment. You have a summer birthday, right? Mine's also pretty in alignment because my birthday's tomorrow, right? So my 52 days after that will be... Um, oh gosh, I don't even know, but sometime like at, through the end of July, basically. So the rest of June through the end of July, I'm in my period of the sun, which is very expansive, which also happens to coincide in the Northern hemisphere with the summer in which the sun is in its cycle of expansive power. So for me, that's in alignment. For other people, maybe not, but it doesn't mean that you can't work with these cycles in a really important way. And this is why we're doing this. So the first 52 days is the cycle of the sun. The second 52 days, you, like you're going through the week, Sunday is Monday next, which is the moon. So the second set of 52 days, you're governed by the moon. And this can be, um, you know, we'll speak next week, as I said, about working with lunar cycles of power. So what is the magic of working with the moon? Um, governed by the divine feminine. It can be more internal. For me, I still find that one fairly expansive because I do a lot of lunar work. I was born on a Monday, right? So I'm governed by the moon which makes sense. New moon rising. Hey, my big old program. Um, the next 52 days are governed by Mars. The next 52 are governed by Mercury for Wednesday. The next 52 are governed by Jupiter. For Thursday. Thursday. And then the next 52 are governed by Venus. Mm -hmm. Like this is something, Kat, I remember actually a big revelation I had when you shared this with me a couple of years ago was looking at the period right before my birthday, things really slow down for me. My business, you know, like things, I, my clients take a break or like, you know, just stuff happens and a lot of things feel like they're getting slower and more contractive. And that's the time of Saturn, right? Which is for me, like right now, I'm in that time of Saturn and I'm looking at last year and looking at, oh yeah, often in June, I have endings. I have relationships end. I have, uh, I, I 
leave someplace, I go into a kind of a completion cycle. I do a lot of introspection. Um, and so when we, when we feel into that and go, oh, actually this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. I'm supposed to be looking at myself and introspection and, and like clearing things away before I re-enter into that sun cycle, which is going to illuminate and bring energy and power to anything that I haven't let go of in that saturnal cycle. Right. That's a really important part that I think um, the cycles of completion, you know, so just as, you know, now in the Northern hemisphere, again, we're entering the summer and which is again, back to that cycle of expansion, bringing energy to whatever's going on. It is always really important, regardless of whatever the cycles of power are going on to bring completion to those things that you don't want to be putting energy into anymore. Again, especially as we enter this time of really great expansion, please, I would encourage you all, and you know, from myself, I'm taking note of this as well, in what areas have I, am I leaking energy? What things are unconsciously getting my attention or even my you know, default passive attention that I don't want to be putting energy into anymore? It is always a good time for closure, but I would say especially in these contractive times, you know, in like in the winter, again, kind of going internally and closing things off, whatever needs to be released. But also I've been doing a lot of that in my last month or so, as I've been in my Saturn ruled cycle right before my birthday, I've been doing a lot of review on having conversations with people that I need to bring closure to. You know, so a couple of weeks ago, I spoke with an ex and shared some things that I was needing to release and needing to bring some closure to about our relationship. That felt really good. Uh, looking to other areas of my business that aren't necessarily in complete alignment with what I want to be doing, either closing them down, shutting them down, or re you know, reconfiguring them in order so that they are in alignment. Yeah. Absolutely, Michelle. And I, yeah, I think that this is, this is a really important piece. And, you know, as you're hitting this 30 mark and uh, we, let's just like, can we touch on the other planetary, um, you know, effects on, on our solar returns as we are, right? Because we have this every year, we know the sun is returning at the same place on our birthday but all of the other planets that are going through their process of moving around the sun are coming into our, you know, they're, they're coming into our, you know, our field and creating their own cycles of power within like cycles of power within cycles of power. So you're sort of have been in and kind of, you know, coming out different people have different times of having their Saturn return and you know, a Saturn's returning, what, every 28, 29 years, and, um, you know, some people from about 27 to 30, a little over 30, are having this huge transformation of change, um, changing everything. I know for me, it was, it was a complete 180 degrees from one life to another, and shedding everything that I knew from before and owning something new. I know that you've been on this path for such a long time and have been so solid in who you are, but there's no way that we can avoid a shake up when Saturn comes around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that. Uh -huh. Yeah, Saturn return, um, I would say, some of the themes of my Saturn return really had to do with fully claiming my work. My Saturn is in Sagittarius and Sagittarius is the spiritual seeker. You know, so here we're getting off track also a little bit from the solar cycles of power, but it is absolutely relevant because this is one again that everybody deals with um, in speaking of cycles of power in general. So my Saturn is in Sagittarius and specifically the you know, the spiritual seeker, Sagittarius works in service to spirit through the intuitive pursuit of truth. So for me, to have Saturn in that sign really spoke to what blocks or dogma or interferences do I have or structures do I have in place, either consciously or unconsciously, that are keeping me from 
being in full alignment with that intuitive pursuit of truth in service to spirit. So as my astrologer friend, you know, I, I had a couple of readings about this over the last few years. I had one kind of before it started and then one sort of partway through. And he was telling me buying into that Saturn complex, really, because clearly I'm, I'm doing this work. I am working in service to spirit through the intuitive pursuit of truth. And yet we all have structures in place that that we need to examine and dissolve. And for me, a lot of those looked like maybe um, uh, like soul DNA karma, like past life stuff, any blockages that I had that said, I don't get to do this work or it's not safe for me to do this work or I don't deserve to be paid to do this work. We've spoken a lot about various aspects of this in previous episodes. So in case you missed any, I would watch on our YouTube channel. But the Saturn cycle of power, when Saturn comes back to align with itself, it really makes us take a good hard look at the structure because that is Saturn's gift is structure. It's also, it's shadow really so this, um, the dual sided coin, you know, both sides of the coin of the structure of Saturn. So returning this back to the solar cycle as I'm just coming out of the Saturn phase of my year, again, the last 52 days of the year before your birthday, really looking at the structures that I have in place in my life and are, are they supporting me or are they inhibiting me? Are they there to serve me? Manifestations of structure, my family, my relationships, my business, my home, my workplace, all of the, my finances, my my uh, accounting, right? Those are all manifestations of structure. So taking the gift aspects of Saturn, particularly for me, my Saturn in Sagittarius, how are these structures actually supporting and giving life to my intuitive work? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. I just wanted to hit on that for a second because, um, you know, so many of Uh, I think probably a lot of our viewers, some people just really aren't conscious and aware of this and are wondering why their life has just completely been turned upside down um, at this point in their life. And so... um, A lot of people don't know. No, we just don't know. And so I just wanted to bring it into awareness that we are being affected and and by the other planets and Saturn's just a big one because it shows up you know every 28 years and so it doesn't come around very often it just has this huge effect but you know the other the other planets are you know coming through and affecting us on a regular basis so um you know we can we can start to look at this solar return and the cycle of our year in different way so that we're able to more easily navigate the energies that are happening, um, you know, within us and around us. Yeah. Kat, what takeaways, like what best tips and practices would you give to our viewers? So we've thrown out a few different ways to examine the solar cycle. Let's review that real quick. What's going on with the sun itself? So where are you seasonally throughout the year? And we spent most of this time talking about the yearly cycle and less the daily cycle. But all of this applies to the day too, right? So noticing what parts of, what times of the day feel the most expansive to you? What times of the day feel the most contractive? I'm a morning person. I like to do things in the morning and that's my, I go for a run and I do my journaling and I do my meditation. And by, um, you know, by a certain time in the evening, I just need to stop right? So that's my cycle of power in the day. But, you know, what is your cycle of power in the year? And then also looking at your personal cycle of power in terms of the alchemical linea, um, the alchemical knowledge that Kat was referencing, looking at that. But what best tips and practices would you have for helping people align their energies with the cycles of power of the sun? Well, I think that the the first one, like, what do we always say? It's like awareness, like being self aware. <laughs> it's like yeah. that's like our our go to for every single episode. Like, if you if you want to have the best tool that you have at your disposal for almost any problem that's coming up for you, or any you know trying to make something better, it's going into your own self awareness. 
and starting to track yourself and do some regular journaling, especially if you're finding that maybe you have, you know, intense swings in mood or things that are coming up um, and, and starting to, you know, write these things down so that you can start to track things for yourself and become aware like oh really this is more of a of a little bit more of an internal challenging time of year for me I'm not gonna plan to go on that cruise with my mother right (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) right from personal experience (laughs) you know like it's it's you, you, our own self awareness can get us out of a lot of of jams that we put ourselves into of knowing you're even knowing on our daily cycle of power um you know i have people who who go oh you want to do that meeting at 9 a.m and no i really don't want to do that meeting at 9 a.m i don't i'm not seeing you you're not coming no you're not coming to my house at 9 a.m it's not happening um because I'm very conscious of my own cycles of power. And instead of beating myself up over it, you know, and I think that's another tool is, is lovingly accepting where you're at in your cycle of power, whether it's from the day, look, I don't do great in the morning. I like a lot of time to be alone and be in my field and do my practices and just not interact. If I start interacting too early in the morning, it's not really that good for anybody. So um, <laughs> it's, it's that loving kindness for yourself of where you're at, whether it's in that yearly cycle or in the daily solar cycle, I think would be my top two, uh, my top two t- tool, tools to bring into awareness around this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's super valuable. I love that um, the journaling has come up a few times today and that's something I'll just touch really briefly upon. My newest personal practice is my morning journaling. And I haven't historically done that. I've gone through phases of journaling where, you know, I'll love it and be all about it. And, but most of the time, not really. And, or I'll write down, you know, my important dreams or visions that I have or messages. I'll write those down. And, but even that is really interesting to look back through my dream journal and see really pretty regularly every Scorpio lunar cycle, I have really big medicine dreams. So every, you know, again, going to a different cycle of power, jumping over to the lunar cycle here, and especially the Scorpio lunar cycle, Scorpio, new moon, and Scorpio. It's like it's on with the big journal. So this is again a super valuable piece of advice. Make note of your processes to bring your awareness to when are the times when I feel most in alignment with my truth? When are the times when I feel most expansive? When are the times when it's easiest for me to interface with want to my life? Start making note of those times and start making note of the times when you feel really contractive. And again, when we're zooming out, going back to that exercise that I gave you at the very beginning of our episode today, take the year in review. You can also, and you know, to, to amend that exercise, maybe put dates by things or approximate dates. Just start remembering like, okay, well, this thing happened in the middle of March, right? Okay, this really big, juicy, expansive thing happened in the middle of the mar- in the middle of March. And then, you know, next year, middle of March rolls around, see if something else big and juicy and expansive happens. And maybe that's a cycle of power, a time of power for you. So this is what we mean when we're talking about aligning to cycles of power, paying attention not only to your own cycles of power, but the things that are so much bigger than us. There's so much out there that is so much bigger than that, than us, so much more powerful than us that we would be shooting ourselves in, in the foot to be working against it or to not be aligning ourselves to it. Right. And that if, you know, for, for those that are maybe doing, um, you know, work with specific uh, guides and energies, frequencies um, to be conscious and aware 
that those uh, specific frequencies might come in stronger at certain times. I know sometimes people are working with a specific guide or being, and then they're like, well, but it's not really strong right now. What happened? Um, and so there might be certain times and periods where a particular being that's working with you, a guide, is coming in really strong for this period of time. So if you do have a, a being that's like showing up for you, like you just like, wow, this, this, this being's really showing up for me, maybe noting that as well. So you can start to track that because it might not show up so strong in the, in the future for a while. And who knows, maybe it'll be back next year in this super strong way. Or like you said, Michelle, dreams that are indicative of, of, you know, medicine dreams or dreams that you're having about things that are going to happen in the future might be having um, a, their own certain cycle of power that you want to start working with. And also within that, at certain times, it might be really helpful to be calling in and working with specific plants, specific animals, beings energies colors um yeah. these these frequencies at different periods throughout the year mm -hmm. absolutely that's something you know that we could talk about forever of like oh the different cycles of power of all of these different totems and i love that you brought it up it's super important uh keep all of this in mind everything that we're discussing here in terms of the solar cycles of power is also applicable to working with the cycles of power of any guide or teacher or totem, right? So for example, squirrel keeps coming in, like at, at the whole time we've been talking, I'm seeing squirrels, like, you know, intuitively, not literally. And squirrels cycle of power is in the fall. So, you know, as they're running around and storing food and really like investing in themselves, it, that's a really rich time for anyone with squirrel medicine is, how can you invest in yourselves by giving yourself the things that you need in order to be thriving throughout the rest of the year, right? So that's one example of working with the cycle of power of an animal totem. And that's just like super in brief, you know? Cool. Well, uh, as always to our viewers, you are totally welcome to get in touch with us anytime you like. You can email us at shamansistersessions at gmail.com. Find us on our Facebook page of the same name or go back on our YouTube channel to watch all of our previous episodes. We are also working on getting on iTunes. So soon. Work in, working on this. We will be available there. Yeah, the, the hopefully we'll be available soon on iTunes and other platforms. Yes, for and all of you. So please uh, feel free to email us with any questions or anything that you would like us to cover in uh, one of our, our sessions. And um, just to, I think, let's just plug what, what we have going on right now. For myself, I am at the end of my sales process for the healers process, which is my online course, which has a live event at the end for healers, coaches, mediums, guides, all of those that are interested in really learning how to work on themselves very deeply and to hold space and be more powerful in their work with others, opening their channel and bringing their work to the world. So um, I'm in the, the midst of that. And what do you have going on right now, Michelle? I have my new moon rising program approaching and these beautiful cards, I claim my sacred work. If you would like to have a chat with me about what is your manifestation of sacred work in the world and what is your relationship to these cycles of power, you can go ahead and we'll set up a phone call and I'll mail you one of those cards. I've got one on my refrigerator at my house. They're absolutely gorgeous. New Moon Rising, speaking of cycles of power, works with the lunar cycle of power very deliberately and very intentionally to help us set our intentions and align our energies with the greatest force of shift and change that's available to us here on earth. And that is the lunar cycle of power, which we'll be discussing next week. So new moon rising, uh, it runs September 6th through December 12th. It is an intensive application only program for those who are interested in discovering and bringing into full actualization the 
manifestation of their sacred work in the world, whether you're a healer already, whether you're an energy worker already, or whatever that manifests as. Sacred work has many different faces. So please go ahead and absolutely beautiful cards and you'd like to have a discussion with me about new moon rising you can yes. do so through my website joyofenergy.com an incredible program like just ridiculously valuable and life-changing i can't even i can't say enough about it um and michelle's work is is just so good and uh, yeah, so I think that's that's it for today. Next week, I will be Tuesday yeah. night. Next week, I will be Pacific time. Mm -hmm. We'll be back on our regular schedule talking about the lunar cycles of power. So we're going to get into some moon magic and moon wisdoms and kind of going into a different, some different elements and, and tools that you can be using to uh, cultivate your your own practices in alignment with the lunar rhythms absolutely as always a pleasure thank you so much for joining us and uh we look forward to seeing you next week bye bye